Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I've got what I think is a very interesting video to share with you. We are going to be attempting to bore and bush the a damaged bore on a forward clutch drum. I'll share it with you in just a second, you'll see. This is a pretty intricate part, and to throw it away because of a damaged bore, it just doesn't make much sense, and I think that we can fix it. And we're going to attempt to do that in this video. At least we're going to get started on it, because I don't have a whole lot of time. But before we do, before I show you this part and I explain it all to you, I want to touch on something that I'm sure a lot of you have been wondering, and that is why have I been absent from the channel? Having years behind me of steady weekly videos, why does Steve obvious or suddenly not producing videos like he has in the past? And the reason for that is over the last nine, 10 months, I've been patiently, not so patiently, waiting on a grandchild and I'm gonna be completely honest with you I've been so stressed that it's kept me out of the shop and I have had a hard time thinking of anything other than this grandchild and I've been more worried about this grandchild being born than I have was when my own kids were born and the reason for that I guess is because you get older and wiser and you realize all the things that can go wrong but now that this little granddaughter her name is Delilah seven pound eight ounces of perfect little baby granddaughter is here I can now exhale and already have trust me and relax a little bit and I've been trying to spend as much time with my family during this time as possible because it's made me realize how much I've missed so that is the reason I normally don't get into my personal life uh, that that much outside of the shop but that is the reason for my absence over the last several months and this you know sporadic videos so do apologize for that but you know I'm human like everybody else so let's go over here let me show you the part that we're going to be attempting to fix and we'll at least get started on it I think you'll find it interesting so bear with me for just a second while I shed a little light on the part that we're going to be attempting to repair because if I just show you this part and start fixing it it's not going to even make sense really what it is unless I give you you know, description of what the part does and maybe just a little bit of the backstory of this part. So on the table here is all of the magic parts that come out of an automatic transmission, at least they're magic to me and to most people. This is a 4L80E, just an empty case right now, and this transmission actually come from a, a snowplow truck that I think spent its entire life pushing snow. It's actually the parts truck that we bought for Elizabeth's crew cab when we wanted an engine and a transmission to use to modernize her, her truck. So, I'm got that truck ready to go to the scrapyard, the parts truck, and before I sent it, because I knew this transmission did not work, before I sent it, I was like, well, pull it out and see how bad it is. You know, because you may be surprised, you may be, uh, you know, I am surprised. There's nothing harder you can do on automatic transmission than push snow with it. You know, light to medium duty truck, pushing snow, it's just not easy on them. And maybe plowing ground would be harder. You know, you put a four row plow behind your pickup truck and start turning earth, that would be probably about the same. Not easy, and I expected this thing to be completely toasted uh, on the inside. So let me show you what I found. It's surprising, actually. What I found, and uh, show you the damage, and then we'll start seeing if we can't repair it. So for decades, my dad ran an automatic transmission repair shop out of our garage at home. He raised five kids that way, and I was the last of those five kids. So by the time that I was old enough to really care about automatic transmissions, my dad was ready to retire from that, and he, he did. He ended up quitting working in the shop where he did automatic transmissions. He did engine rebuilding, he, and he did basic tune-ups and stuff like that as well. You know, anything to keep the lights on. But as far as I can remember, the, the bread and butter of his shop was transmission work. And I can remember from my earliest memories, bench tops full of these parts and transmissions in different, different states of either disassembly or reassembly. So having a dad that's an expert at it doesn't mean that the son is an expert at it. That's what I'm also trying to say. I'm not an expert, so keep that in mind. We will go over these parts super quick. Here is our part that's damaged, and uh, a lot of you guys will... that. If you do one of these, you'll know what I'm trying to fix here. But this is the forward clutch drum, and it's what's the problem. I'm kind of excited to get in on this and see if we can save it. So let me get you down here. We'll disassemble this drum. I'll show you what's wrong with it. We'll gloss over these parts and then get into the repair. 
So I've already had this drum apart. So this is just a clutch pack in here. All of this works off of hydraulics, so you know. And if you don't have good seals in your hydraulic systems, it can't clutch, or it can't apply those clutch packs well. And it causes them to slip, generate heat, and burn burn up. And that's what happened inside of this uh, inside of this clutch drum. And it happened for what I think is a couple different reasons. So uh, let's tear this dang thing down. And I'll explain to you what I think happened to it. So you can see there's clutch packs in here, clutch discs, clutch plates, whatever you would like to call it. And these things are absolutely smoked. Now every other disc here should have friction material on it, like this front disc here. You can see it's got a friction material on it and all the rest of them are completely smoked. It's all gone basically. So this clutch pack, even the steels and this uh, wavy plate, they're all pretty much junk. This thing has been extremely hot in this clutch pack here. And that's because it was slipping. So let me show you why I think that this was slipping. Some of the things that led to that and where the damage lies in this drum. So if you look at the back side in this drum here, there is a piston in here. There's seals on the outside, seals on the inside, and fluid gets behind this piston and pushes it out this way, and it squeezes those clutch packs together and, you know, applies a clutch. Basically, we got a row of springs here. I don't know how well you can see those. A bunch of springs, and those push the piston back and make sure that the clutch frees up when pressure, hydraulic pressure, is released. So you can see, in order to, in order to understand here, you have to be able to see the part that goes inside of this bore because the bore is what's damaged on this drum. So you can see we've got a sealing ring here, a sealing ring here, and we've got a hole. So fluid comes out of this hole. Hopefully you can see there is a hole in the center of this bore. So this fits in here. It's supposed to fit in here nice and snug. Not super tight, but snug. This fits in here. Fluid goes through the shaft. It gets sealed between those two sealing rings that I showed you right here, gets sealed in between those, and applies fluid pressure inside behind this piston and squeezes this clutch. At least that's the best of my understanding anyway. And this shaft has been able to get loose because of some wear, and it's been allowed to beat around in this bore and damage the sealing surfaces. So fluid can now, because of the damage in here, can leak beside these rings and it doesn't apply this clutch as hard as it should and that can lead to, to burning to the burning of the clutch packs. Also, the reason why that this has allowed, been allowed to get loose, this is kind of a compound problem, is the bushing back here, this bushing, which is another part runs into which this shaft runs in, this bushing has worn and that's also allowed the shaft to rattle around in there causing a sealing issue. Now, I don't want to get into everything because this would be too long, but you get the idea. This bore's damaged. This shaft can't seal well inside of there, causing fluid to leak around these sealing rings, causing this clutch pack not to apply properly, causing it to slip and burn up. So let me tell you why I'm doing this really quick, because if I had other hard part damage, it'd just be a waste of time. I'd throw these parts in a box and I'd give them to somebody who was rebuilding the transmission or save them for a later date. But after inspecting all of these sub-assemblies, this is the only hard part damage that I've got. We do have normal wear. I thoroughly inspected all of these, like the uh, planetary gear sets or sprags where they run or one-way clutches, tore down the pump, looked at the body for scoring and damage. Everything else is in really good shape, surprisingly good shape, seeing as this thing pushed snow. So I think if I can repair this forward clutch drum and get a you know, comprehensive rebuild kit, bushings, bonded pistons, uh, get a set of pump gears just because if you tear one down, I think it's a good idea. New sprags, a couple updates to the valve body, obviously clutch packs, things like that. This will be a great transmission to just go back together and be used instead of throwing away you know, a thousand good parts because you got one bad part. I think, you know, we need to do less throwing away and more repairing. So I got to compress this spring pack here in order to get a snap ring off and get that 
the, all those springs out of there. Get them out of my way. Now, because this clutch got so hot and it is so close to these springs here, those springs are going to have to be replaced. Because you overheat a spring and then it loses its ability to disengage the clutch. Those clutches rub because the piston's not back seated like it should be. And then you burn the clutch up again. So. See if I can get this snap ring out of here. I don't necessarily have the exact pliers that I need. So I'll get you a good look inside of that bore. Hopefully you can see the damage, but there's a couple ways to repair this as far as I know, not being an expert. I've seen where you can bore this out slightly and then use an oversized sealing ring. So you bore this out to clean up the surface and you use a slightly larger sealing ring to take up that extra bore size. So you get a good seal there. Don't know how I feel about that repair, but it probably would work or they wouldn't recommend it. Anyway, there's another one where they sell all the tooling required to bore this out and then they sell you a bushing to press in there to bring this back down to original size and then you just use standard uh, standard diameter sealing rings. So what I'm going to do instead of buying all of the kit that is required, I can just make my own bushing. You know, make my own bushing, do my own boring. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bore this out, make a bushing to press in there, and then bore that bushing out to accept the factory size sealing rings here. So the axial and radial run out of this bore is pretty important. We don't want it to run out because then it'll just beat around on the shaft that goes in here and we'll be right back in the same situation that we were before. This bore is so damaged, I just don't trust it to indicate off of. But fortunately, we have tons of machine surfaces on here that should be square with this bore. This surface here, this surface here, that surface there. Inside, we got this lip here. We could use potentially the outside of the body and we could use the face here. So we got lots of ways to make sure this thing runs out true this way and this way. So what I'll do, I'll get one dialed in, check the other surface, and I'll go back and forth until I get both the axial and the radial as close as I can. So I'm done with a thousandths indicator. Probably not necessary to go to a tenths indicator, but this is one of my favorite tenths indicators. Just, I like using it. That's about as good as you're going to get. Check the face, internal face. So here's my plan as far as boring and bushing this. So you can see, hopefully, there is a small hole there. I'm not for sure if that's either a vent hole or a lube hole, but it really doesn't matter. But I don't want to bore this out so much that I cut into that hole. I also don't want to just remove a very little bit of material, just the damaged area, because that'll leave me with a bushing that's too thin to have any substance and to stay in there. So I'm going to split the difference. Um, and bore this hole out to 24 millimeters or 945 thousandths. So I'll bore this out. I'll take this out of the lathe. I will make a bushing. I'll leave the ID of this bushing that I'm going to make small. 
I'll press the bushing in and I'll put all of this back in the lathe and then uh, bore the bushing to fit a nice slip fit on that shaft. So that's the plan. So the tool I'm gonna to be using to bore this out, it's a three quarter inch carbide end mill that I ground down on the cutter grinder, put a cutting edge on it. Carbide makes great boring bars because it holds a good edge. It doesn't, it's rigid, doesn't push off very much. Now the hole size in this is not super critical really. What's important is that I get a good measurement of that hole. That way when I make my bushing, you know, the, the interference fits you know, within the range that I want. So what I'm gonna do is just make a couple passes on this, just really light passes. I mean, you get the idea. And then take a couple measurements with the snap gauge, just a little, a little uh, bore gauge, a little stare at bore gauge. Several measurements until I get to the hole size that I want. Then I'll pull this out, and make my bushing. So I've got all the damage out of it. So I'm just gonna use my gauge here, stick it in there, snap it out. Make sure it's good and centered. And then just rock it out of there. And I'll get a measurement of it. I'll zero uh, the dial on my cross feed and then I'll know where I'm starting, know how much I need to take out to get to my destination that I'm looking for, the number that I'm looking for. That'll make things go go quick, quicker anyway. So we're at 887 thousandths and three tenths. So anytime I'm measuring a bore with snap gauges, I take multiple readings. That way, that way I'm for sure. Because it is, it's easy to get to get a bit wrong or a bad measurement with one of these. I would never trust just one reading. So put it in there, get it at an angle a bit so I can rock it out. Make sure that it's center of the bore. Kind of move it around a little bit. Tighten down the lock on the back there, and I want to do that consistently every time I use use the gauge. Rock it out and then take a measurement. Should be right at 900,000, sort of close. When I measure using my mics with this, I want the same kind of resistance that I felt rocking it out of the bore you know, on my anvils of my mics here. So yeah, we're right on it, basically, within a tenth or two. So I just need to go you know, 40 thousandths, 44 thousandths. and forty thousandths and three tenths that's what we're saying so I've got three thousand seven tenths okay. I'm not for sure the material that this drums made of but it's cutting really nice and making really fine little chips it's not cast iron. I think it's cast steel of some sort.
not particularly hard. for 944. Mm, here we go. Half thou under. Alright, so I have to keep that in. That's I'm not making another cut on this. We'll just leave it at that because my bushing will be made to fit this. We we missed it by a little. Missed it by a half thou. So now I'm going to pull this out. Going to make my bushing. And we'll press it in here. So this is a piece of 4140. And that's what I'm going to make our bushing out of. So on this bushing, I am going to go for a thousandths of an inch press fit. I think that should be plenty. There's really, there's really, you know, not much load on this bushing. So, you know, I keep checking this bore, making sure before I go to, you know, there's not a lot of room for error here. So I'm getting anywhere, um, 943.5 to 943.6. So I'm going to go for 944.6. That's, that's the number OD that I'm going for on our bushing. And it needs to be a little over an inch long. So we're starting off with an inch and a half material. So I'm just going to come in and touch off. We're going to blast off a half inch. You know, I'll get a measurement. And then, uh, then I'll start being careful from that point on. So I'm getting down there, starting to get close. Now heat's going to be a big issue because the hotter this is, the bigger it's going to measure. So I'll just let it get, let it cool down a bit. It's not crazy hot right now. Let it cool down a bit. I'll take a measurement and then I'll sneak up on the size that I'm looking for. You know, and then if I have to, I'll polish it down. Just take a file, just work it down really slow to get to the size that I'm looking for. All right, so final cut. Hopefully, I get really close. I need to pull off eleven thousandths. That's kind of you know tough to work to the thousandths on this machine, but that should be should be it. Come on, come on. 94455. Five. Boom. And I'll take that. So we're we're a tenth or two under where we needed to be, but that I think is good enough. So now I'm gonna bore this bushing out. This way I get a nice concentric ID and OD while it's in the lathe. I'll finish bore it 
when it's pressed after it's pressed into the to the actual clutch hub. So there we go, OD is to size, ID is about a hundred thousandths of an inch uh, undersized. Like I said, I'll finish bore it within the whole unit. Now I need to take this out of the lathe, take it over to the milling machine and drill a hole directly through it. It has to have a, a lube passage through it. So we'll drill a hole directly through it. I'll get some measurements off of the hub to determine where that hole is and what size it needs to be. I am going to dress this edge really quick while I'm in here. Just knock that sharp edge off. And that is it. Then I'll just cut this off in the saw and I'll finish machine it to length after it gets pressed in. I get my bushing and holes lined up. I'll just flip the hub over, machine the back off flush with the housing. You'll see. So if you look down in there, hopefully, you can see there's a lube hole in the bore right there. And then there's one directly across from that on this side. So what I plan to do is just get a rough measurement of how or where the center of that bore is. Transfer it over here onto our stock. And I'm going to drill the hole in my bushing oversize bigger than this hole. And long, you know, it's not super critical. Long as our hole and our bushing is larger than to a certain degree than our hole in in the drum here and when we press it in we get it pretty well centered it's going to be good enough So just deburred the front of our hole there. 
There's our rough bushing. I'm gonna press it in from this side, trying to make sure to line those holes up as good as I can. I'm gonna wipe this bushing down really good and the bore. I'm gonna put a little bit of retaining compound on both. Hopefully they press together and feel, I'm satisfied with the way that it feels. You know, then this thing will go back in the lathe. It'll get finished board. That'll be it, be done. All right, so cleaned everything. Some carburetor cleaner, both the bore and the bushing. A little 641 Loctite retaining compound. Both on the bushing and on the bore. Probably be fine without this, but you get the idea. Oh yeah, it feels, feels about right. Make sure, check my whole line, alignment. Oh yeah, we're close, really close. Boom. That looks really good. Happy with the whole alignment too. So from the press, back to the lathe. Dialed it in just like I did before. Starting out with a tenth or with a thousandths indicator and then finishing this baby off with a tenths indicator. Dialed it in, like I say, exactly the way I did before. So now what I need to do, because my bushing is longer than it needs to be. Right? I pressed it in until it holes lined up and I was happy. It's a little bit proud on the front face. I can catch my nail on it anyway. I'm just going to come in with this boring bar. Go across the front just like that. Get it to where you know it's a nice flush surface. Hello Cora. And then uh, we will bore the bushing to size and then we'll flip this and cut the bushing to length on the back side because it's sticking out probably I don't know eighth of an inch or maybe a little better than that because it's long. So we'll face it to it fits in there just like it's supposed to. facing operation didn't take much now I need to bore this thing bore this thing out to size all right so this is the end of the shaft that needs to fit in that bore it actually it seals with Teflon sealing rings. So I'm thinking a nice 
you know, clearance fit. Three to five thousandths probably is what I'm thinking. Larger on the bore than what the end of this shaft is because it seals with these Teflon rings. We don't want it to touch. We just want to leave plenty of room for these seals to, you know, squeeze out and, and do the sealing for us. So that's what we're going to do. What is this? Uh, this is... 855 thousandths right on the end there 855 check it here 854.9 so you get the idea about three thousandths more than that i gotta get a measurement on the board see how far i need to go So it should be one cut away from getting this board a size. Now I'm going to do some polishing on this board with some, some scotch Bright just to give it a really nice finish so those sealing rings will seal well. So 855 is what our shafting is, 855, and right now our bore is, mm, let's just, let's say 8. 49. Yeah, so 849. So we're six nine thousandths away from three thousandths clearance on that shaft. So we'll dial in nine and it should it should fit in there good. Then I'll chamfer this edge and then I'll make a decision from, from there whether I need to go bigger. But three thousand should be good. I don't exactly have a number on what it should be. So I'm just assuming a few thousands clearance will be enough. If it feels too tight, I, I can always take more out, but I can't put it back in, not easily. So I think we'll start off with the three thousands clearance. a relatively you know should slide in there really easy uh, it'll slide up to the ring because I haven't take this took in the cylinder rings off but. oh yeah yeah plenty of clearance Once those rings are compressed that will that should seal just fine I'm gonna polish this up really good with some scotch bright some of my most favorite abrasive material and then uh, which it's already a really nice finish in there probably wouldn't have to do that but I'm gonna and then I'll flip it and bore and face that bushing to to length Mm. I'm going to have to move this 
scoring bar out in the holder a little bit. This face here is touching my tool post. Good enough. Now I'll just divert this back side. This thing's done. All right, so I am super happy with the way that that bushing went in there, and I fully expect it to, to work just like a new one. Now, the reason why this failed, and I think I said it, is because this shaft was allowed to beat around in there. Now, the reason that this was allowed to do that is because this bushing here, not the one we put in there, because it wasn't a bushing at all, it was just made into the unit. This bu outer bushing here, it's a little narrow bushing, about 3 eighths of an inch wide. That bushing fails and allows the end of the planetary here to just be sloppy in here, beat around. Let me show you this bearing in here like that. Give me just a second. This is even harder to get together than all new bushings. But. So if you look in here, hopefully you'll see it. Look how much that's allowed to move. And this is actually what supports and keeps this shaft center inside of the inside of the bore there. So that needs to be addressed and hopefully a wider bushing in the end of the planetary here will you know keep that from happening. Now I do see a lot of people who just go ahead and they they replace this. Now my argument for that, my argument against that and for repair on this unit is because then you're replacing half of a gear set. You know, if you replace this and it's new, and then you go ahead and you put your used planetary in there, well, you know, you've got one brand new and one wore in gear set. It's going to cause metal. It's just not a good idea. And if you're going to replace this, you probably should replace this. And if you're going to replace this, then you should replace this because it runs in there on the same gears as well. And it becomes a chain thing where you're going to spend a ton of money, you know, to get everything to where it's new that runs together. So I think seeing as mine are, and they're plenty, plenty good as far as serviceable. I, I, you know, I'm not worried about these at all. Seeing as my gears are in good shape and all I needed to do was freshen up the bore here. I thought that was by far probably the, the most cost-effective way to go. So a little wider bushing in here, a little updated bushing, you know, some new ceiling rings and stuff, and we are good to go, I think. So pretty neat the way all this stuff works. There we go. Fits excellent, by the way, the shaft in the in the in the in there. I mean it's got it's got some play, a little bit, but it should have some play. You know, it's spins free in there. The only thing touching in that bore is the ceiling rings, but it ain't got excessive clearance, so should be good to go. I am super happy with the way that this has worked out.